In this video, we'll build a three statement financial model where we'll have a fully integrated income statement, balance sheet, and cash flow statement. We'll also have supporting schedules and assumptions to forecast these three statements. And finally, we'll make a revolver to make sure we don't run out of cash. So let's get into it. And here's the Excel file that we'll be working with, which you can download for free in the video description. The first step for us is going to be to forecast the income statement. And for it, let's first remove the grid lines, which can sometimes be a bit distracting by going to Alt W V G. That's the same as going to the view tab and unticking on grid lines here. Now, if we scroll down over from the side, you can see that we have these X's. So we can just hit control down arrow to skip to the next section, control down arrow again, all the way till we get to the assumptions. And the first assumption here is that for the revenue, well, it's going to be the price times the quantity, where here we have the units and the price per unit. So we can use those in the revenue tab over here by going to equals, and then we'll go ahead and select the quantity multiplied by the price per unit and hit enter. Next up in the income statement, we have COGS, which is short for cost of goods sold. And these are the direct costs associated with selling. For example, if you sell lemonade, then it's going to be your lemon, your water, and so on. So we're going to go to equals, and let's make sure this is negative here. And then if we scroll down all the way to our assumptions again, we have it as a percentage of revenue. So it's going to be that 43% here, and we'll multiply that by our revenue up over here. We're going to multiply it by the revenue and hit enter. So for the gross profit, it's simply going to be the sum of these two. So we'll just use the equals sum formula and select the two and hit enter. Next up, we have SGNA, which stands for selling, general and administrative. Sometimes you'll see this as a percentage of revenue, as is the case for us here, or it can also be a fixed amount. For example, a line item like rent, which is included in SGNA, doesn't necessarily scale alongside revenue, depending on the business model. For example, a software company probably doesn't need rent to scale with revenue. For now, let's go ahead and fill in this assumption. So it's gonna be equals to the revenue multiplied by, let's make this negative as it's going to be a cost, and it's gonna be multiplied by that 35% and we'll hit enter. Then we've got depreciation, which we'll leave out for now, but we'll get back to later in the video. So for now, let's just hit the shift right arrow to select that area, and let's highlight it in orange by hitting Alt H H. And I'm just gonna put the light orange over here, just to make sure that we don't forget. We can already set up the operating profit, which is simply gonna be the sum of the gross profit plus SGNA because it's negative, plus depreciation, and we'll hit enter. Same thing with interest, for the time being, we'll leave that out. We'll get back to it after the balance sheet. So we'll go to Alt H H again, and let's also put it in that light orange color and hit enter. For earnings before tax, it's gonna be the sum of these two over here. So operating profit plus interest, assuming it's negative. And then for the taxes here, it does get a bit trickier. That's because if we don't have a profit to be taxed, so an earnings before tax, that means we shouldn't really have a tax amount. So we're gonna create a condition for this. We'll go to equals if, we'll hit the tab key there. And the logical test is that this figure here has to be greater than zero. If not, there's actually nothing to be taxed on. So if that is the case, we'll multiply that earnings before tax multiplied by the tax rate, which we should have down below as that 21%. So we'll select that comma, and if it's not the case, meaning that this figure here is less than zero, then in that scenario, we're just gonna put a zero there as there's no taxes. Close a parenthesis and hit enter. Let's go back inside of the formula by hitting the F2 key. And at the very beginning, we're just gonna put a negative sign. And net income is simply going to be the sum of these two. So we can go to equal sum. And let's sum these two over here. So now that we have this for one year and we've made it dynamic, so all we need to do is select the whole area. So control shift down, then we'll go shift right arrow and just use the shortcut control R to drag that along all the way to the right. If you like what you're seeing and you wanna learn more about financial modeling, check out our complete finance and valuation course where you can learn all about accounting, finance, valuation, 
and financial modeling on Excel. If you're interested, check out the link in the video description. In the course, first we cover financial statement analysis using Apple's real annual report as an example. Then we get into financial modeling through a three statement model on Apple using different scenarios to make it dynamic. Unlike in this video, we'll use Apple's real financial statements taken from their annual report. And we'll also have different cases and scenarios to see how the forecast would affect our model. After that, we begin the valuation phase where you'll learn to do a discounted cash flow, a comparable company's valuation, and a present transactions valuation on Adobe, looking at their real financial statements to eventually derive a valuation range. Lastly, we'll show you how to present an investment thesis using a stock pitch format. We also have several other courses, including Excel, Power BI, financial accounting, and more. So if you're interested in checking it out, head over to the link in the description below. All right, back to the video. The next step for us is to forecast the fixed assets, which is going to help in finding this line item over here for depreciation, which we're still missing from the income statement. So let's head down with control down arrow using the axis to the side. And if we go down over to supporting schedules, we'll be able to find the depreciation area over here. So up here we have CAPEX, which is short for capital expenditure. And these are the funds that we use to buy or upgrade any kind of fixed assets like machinery and equipment. Now these fixed assets do get worn out over time, hence why we have the existing assets used for life. These are the ones that are pre the forecasted period. And then the new assets used for life. So these are the ones that we have bought uh, in the future, you could say. So first up here, let's link up the PPE, which is short for property, plant and equipment for 2023 end of period. So we'll go hit the equals key we can actually find this figure in the balance sheet, which we'll get into fully later. So let's head over to the balance sheet and right here, you'll be able to find it. And let's hit on enter there. So now that we have the CAPEX and we also have the useful life, we can calculate the depreciation of each asset. If you're not too clear on depreciation, it's when we allocate the cost of a tangible asset over its useful life. So a tangible asset basically means one that's physical, meaning that you can actually touch like a machine or equipment. In that scenario, we would take the full cost, let's say it costs 10,000, divide that by the useful life to eventually reach the cost per year, which would be the depreciation. With this information, we can calculate the existing asset depreciation, which is simply, well, the existing um, fixed assets that we have, which is this figure here. And we're going to divide that by 10, which is their useful life. Let's make sure we lock this whole area. So we're simply going to select everything in here and hit the F4 key there to get those dollar signs and hit enter. Now we'll go shift right and control R. This way we have the existing asset depreciation and now we need to work on the new asset depreciation. And that's why we have this small table over here. All we've done here is we've put this sideways with the transpose function. So I can go equals transpose there hit the tab key and um, I can simply select this area here and you can see that it distributes it kind of um, vertically as opposed to horizontally. And from here, well, we've calculated the amounts for, hey, this is the useful life and this is the capex in one year. So therefore we have this much in annual depreciation cost. Here it's going to be this much plus anything new that we bought, which is this amount and so on and so forth. So for the new asset depreciation, it's actually gonna be the sum of all of these here this way we account for any new ones we purchase and we'll hit enter there so we can go shift right and control r then the total is simply going to be the sum of the two so we can go to equals sum and we'll select these two now shift right and control r again now in this section we have made some small simplifications just in the interest of time but this is enough for us to plug it back into the income statement. So we'll go up over here, go to equals, let's make it negative, and we'll take the calculated depreciation, so this figure right here, and hit enter. Now we can go shift right and control R. Awesome, we filled in the income statement, the depreciation, but we're still missing the interest. So let's go ahead and try to calculate that. 
For this, let's head over down to our assumptions. So using the control down arrow, all the way over here where we can see the long-term debt. Basically, if you're not too familiar with interest, it's the fee that you have to pay for borrowing money. So in our case, we have borrowed 40,000 and we have an interest expense of 7%, meaning that the actual interest amount that we pay is simply the long-term debt multiplied by the interest percentage and hit enter. Now we can go to chef right and control R. Now we can go back up to the income statement and fill in this final line item by going to equals and let's go ahead and select it from down over here. It's going to be that 2,800 there and hit enter. Let's make sure to make it negative, put the minus sign in front here and then shift right and control R. All right, now that we've worked on the income statement, let's move on to the balance sheet. And it's just gonna be right below the income statement. And as you can see for it, we have the 2023 actual figures and the forecasted figures for five years. First, for 2023, let's make sure that it's all looking okay by getting all of the totals. So equals sum here for all of the total current assets. The total assets is the current plus the non-current, which is simply PPE for us. And we'll hit enter. For total current liabilities, it's the sum of these two. So we can use the alt equals is the shortcut there and hit enter. For total liabilities, total current plus the non-current and hit enter and shareholders equity alt equals again and hit enter finally total liabilities plus equity is this figure plus this one right here and hit enter now for a balance sheet we can always make sure it's correct by seeing if it balances so does the total assets so equals total assets minus total liabilities and equity equals zero. If that's the case, it means that it's working well. So that's all looking good. Now we can work on all of the forecast years. And the first line item is cash and cash equivalents, which we don't quite know yet because we need to use the cash flow statement to find it. So for the time being, we'll select it and Alt H H again. Let's highlight it in orange just so we don't forget. Now we can get started with accounts receivable. For this, we'll head over towards the bottom where we have some assumptions and we'll make them over here. As you can see under balance sheet assumptions, we have accounts receivable as a percentage of revenue. So for 2023, meaning our historical year, we'll take the accounts receivables that we already had in the past. So this figure right here and divide that by the revenue that we had for that period, which is this figure over here and hit enter there. So it's a 6.2. What we wanna do from here is basically project it out. Ideally, we would have like three years of previous historical periods and we would take the average. But in this case, we only have one year of data. So we'll simply link that, then hit shift right and control R. Same thing goes with inventory down below. We can just select the area, so shift right. And then we can just go to shift down and control D. That's gonna drag this formula down. To make sure it's all correct, we can always double click inside of it. Inventory as a percentage of COGS. We can see that we have COGS over here well selected. And the same thing should be the case here with inventory. So it's all looking accurate. While we're here, let's also add the revenue and the COGS over in these two lines that we actually calculated using the income statement earlier. So we'll go to equals and select the revenue up over here. And the COGS is right below it, so we can just go shift down, shift right, control R to drag to the right, and control D to drag down. Let's make sure to change the signs here to a negative, minus here, just so it's consistent. So shift right, control R again. Now that's all looking good, and we can calculate the accounts receivables and the inventory just by going back up over here. And accounts receivable is going to be equals to the actual percentage that we calculated multiplied by the revenue and hit enter there. Now, same thing with inventory. So we can drag both of these, shift down, control D, and then shift right, control R. Then we can take the sum. So it's gonna be, we can actually take it from here. So we just go shift right and control R. It's the same formula to make sure it's working. You can always press the F2 key and you can see it's summing the right area. 
For property, plant, and equipment, we actually need to use the fixed asset schedule that we had down below. Let's go ahead and scroll down. So it's gonna be this schedule over here. We had worked on it for depreciation. We just need to go a bit further with property, plant, and equipment. So we have the ending PPE, which is this figure over here that we found earlier, which is actually the same under the balance sheet as this figure over here. Hit enter there. Now the beginning PPE for the next year, for 2024, is actually the same as the ending PPE for the previous year. Then for CapEx, it's gonna be this figure right over here. That's an increase for us. It's positive in that we're getting more assets in while depreciation is negative for us as that's removing from our fixed assets. So the sum of these by hitting Alt equals is going to be our ending PPE. Now we can go to Shift right and Control R again to drag this along. Let's plug this back into our balance sheet. So up over here, we're going to go to equals and let's plug it. So let's go ahead and select it from down here, the 57,000 it should be. Now we can go shift right and control R. All right, so we now have the total assets amounts. So let's go shift right and control R. That should be working well. So we can move on to the liabilities. For accounts payable down below, it's going to be similar to the receivables. If we scroll down, you can find it over here. Accounts payable as a percentage of COGS for the historical period. So let's go ahead and take the accounts payables which is going to be this figure here and divide that by the cogs that we actually placed down here and hit enter. So again, we'll use the same method as before and just link it, shift right and control R. Awesome. Now we can go back up to the accounts payables here and select equals. We'll take the cogs and multiply it by, by that percentage. So cogs multiplied by that 19.6 and hit enter. Now for the revolver, we'll get back to this later. In case you're not too familiar, a revolver is basically like a credit card for a company. So whenever there's not enough cash, you can always take money from it. So for now, we'll just put Alt H H and we'll leave it at orange. The idea here is that if we don't have enough cash, we would take money from the revolver. We'll get to it later though. Now let's select this area, shift right and control R. But same thing up above here, shift right and control R. Awesome. We can move on to long-term debt, which we actually had down under our, our assumptions as well. So let's go ahead and find that. That's simply this figure right here for long-term debt. As you can see, it stays constant. Shift right and control R. Total liabilities is gonna be the sum of the current. So equals total current plus whatever else is left, which is only this figure here. So shift right and control R. Finally, we have the shareholders equity section with common stock first. And for this one, we'll just assume that we don't issue any more stock or repurchase stock either. So let's leave that at a constant 25,000. Then for retained earnings down below, this requires a bit more of a formula, hence why we have it in a supporting schedule. So if we look down over here, we'll notice that we have the retained earnings schedule and it's got the beginning of period retained earnings, which is the same as the ending. So let's go ahead and link that from our historical balance sheet figure, which is gonna be this one right here and hit enter. Then that's the same as the beginning, kind of the same pattern as the PPE above. Hit enter there. The net income, we just calculated using the income statement. So it's gonna be equals to this figure up over here and we'll hit enter. Then we've got dividends, which is basically when you pay out money from the company to the investors. So in this case, you can see that we have some assumptions on how much has been paid out. Now it's negative here because it's kind of taking away from the retained earnings or from the net income of the company. We'll go to Alt equals and hit enter there. Now we can take these areas. So shift down, shift right and control R. Same thing over here, shift right and control R. Just make sure you don't select this area and go to shift control right, sorry, just because you'll make the dividends amount the same throughout, which is not quite right. You can go back by pressing control Z. So once we have these figures, let's go back up over here and plug retained earnings, which is gonna be equals to this figure down over here. 
the ending period retained earnings. And now we can select them, shift right and control R. The total shareholders equity is simply we've calculated here as the sum of the two. So we can go shift right and control R. Now total liabilities and equity is equals to the total liabilities here plus any shareholders equity and we'll hit enter. Now we can go shift right and control R. Now to make sure this is correct, we can also do the balance check. So we can go to shift right and control R. But you'll notice that the figures are not correct here. That's because we're missing the cash line item up top. So we'll fill that in in the next step using the cash flow statement. So if we scroll down by hitting control down arrow over to the cash flow statement, the ending of year cash balance that we find will plug back into the balance sheet. So let's get started with this. As you can see for the cash flow statement, we're using the indirect method. If you're not too familiar with the differences between the direct and indirect method, I'd recommend you check out our financial accounting course. So first, we're going to plug the net income from the income statement. So we'll go to equals and select the net income right here. Hit enter there. Then we'll add back depreciation. So make sure that this figure is positive. We can go to equals. Let's put a negative there. So we have a negative on a negative, making it positive. And we'll select depreciation from right here under the income statement and hit enter. We're adding back depreciation here as the whole point of the operating activities section is to go from net income all the way to cash from operations. So depreciation is a non-cash expense. It simply takes the total cost of the asset and allocates it over its useful life. For accounting purposes, there's no actual cash outflow going on every year, hence why we add back the cash to net income. This way we manage to remove the effect. Now moving on to the change in accounts receivables. For this, we're going to go to equals and we gotta make sure we get the signs correctly. So we have accounts receivables up here. Now, if accounts receivables has gone up from 2023 to 2024, is that positive or negative for cash? That's actually negative for cash. And the reason is that we haven't managed to convert these receivables into cash. Instead, they've increased as accounts receivables. So what we'll do here is take this year's minus this year's over here. And so that change will be negative for us. Inventory will go to equals and the concept is exactly the same. So if inventory is gone up, that means that we didn't convert this inventory like what could be lemonade for a lemonade stand into cash, which is negative for our cash balance. So this one minus this one here and hit enter. Then for accounts payable, it's the opposite. Now, if accounts payable has gone up, that's a positive thing because we didn't have to pay cash to these suppliers or vendors that we maybe owe money to. So we'll select this year's minus the previous and hit enter. With that, we can calculate the cash flow from operating by going to alt equals and hit enter. Next up, we have capital expenditures under cash flow from investing activities. For this, we can go to equals and all the way down, we should find it the capex under our fixed asset schedule and hit enter. Now, as for the signs here, if we spend cash on buying a building or equipment, that's obviously a cash outflow. So we'll put it as a negative sign and hit enter there. That's our total cash flow from investing activities. And then we've got the change in long-term debt. Now we'll go to equals and we had the new year's long-term debt minus the old years. Now there's no difference here as we didn't raise any debt. Let's see for the change in revolver, that's gonna be equals to. We'll set it up for now, even though there's no figures, this one minus this one and hit enter there. Change in common stock is pretty much the same thing. So this figure over here minus this other one and we'll hit enter. Finally, for dividends, this is obviously a cash outflow as we're taking cash from the company and giving it to investors. So under the retained earnings schedule, we have it as a negative. So we'll leave it as such. Once we have this, we can calculate the cash flow from financing by going to alt equals and hitting enter. Awesome. We're almost done with the cash flow statement. We just have the beginning of year cash balance, which is the same as the ending of the previous years. So we'll go to equals and we're going to select this figure right here, hit enter there. 
the change in cash is the sum of the operating plus the investing plus the financing activities and hit enter and the ending of year cash balance is going to be the sum of these two so we can go to alt equals and hit enter once we have this and if we linked it all correctly we can just go to shift right and control r awesome with this information we can link the ending year of cash to the balance sheet so we'll go up over here and go to equals and let's select it from down over here and hit enter now we'll go to shift right and control r and you can see that our balance sheet is balancing so that's all looking very good so far there's still one final step we need to cover which is the revolver also known as a revolving credit facility this makes sense in the scenario where the company doesn't have a positive cash balance maybe the forecast you made is very negative and it's expected to not have cash in the future then the revolver is needed for example in many financial models you might have instead of just one set of assumptions you would have multiple assumptions like a best case a base case and a worst case which is how we teach it at career principles that scenario under the worst case it's likely that you'll need a revolver so if we scroll over to the bottom of the financial model, you'll notice that we have this area called the revolver. The first part here with the available cash simply has the goal of finding out how much cash the company has. So pretty much the same as the cash flow statement, except that it doesn't include the revolver itself. So let's go ahead and fill in this section by going to equals, the beginning cash balance we had under the cash flow statement as well. So it's going to be this figure here, hit enter. Then the cash flow from operations we had also calculated as this figure right up over here. Cash flow from investing, same thing. I know this is a bit tedious, so feel free to go faster if you want to. And as you can see, for the cash from financing, we actually have it split because we don't want to include the revolver. So the changing long term debt we calculated up over here, hit enter. Change in common stock, same thing. It's going to be up over here it's gonna be this one hit enter and the dividends is gonna be equals to this figure right here the negative 10,000 hit enter now the cash available for the revolver is the old equals so it's gonna be the sum of all of these and hit enter now let's drag this along for all of the years so shift right and control R let's scroll down lower and over here we have the revolver beginning balance which is simply going to be equals to if we scroll up over here as you can see we didn't take out any revolver so we'll hit there and it's going to be zero then we go back up to the beginning balance which is the same as the ending and let's go ahead and set up the total as well which is going to be the sum of these two here now let's drag this along so shift right and control r now we can work on the change in revolver so we need to set up some kind of a formula that only triggers the revolver if the cash available here is less than zero because that means that we're gonna need to borrow some money now if it's greater than zero we don't want to borrow anything also if there's any revolver outstanding we do want to pay it off with the cash available that we have so the formula that we'll use here is going to be equals a minus min formula Hit the tab key this is a lot easier than using if statements in this scenario and we should take whatever is smallest between the cash available comma and the beginning balance we'll close the parenthesis and hit enter now let's drag this along with shift right and control r and we'll test this out later but first let's go ahead and link it to our balance sheet so up over here we're gonna go to equals let's go ahead and link the revolver ending balance not the change but this figure here instead then we'll go to shift right and control r all right now let's test this revolver so you can understand what i've been speaking about so over here let's suppose that we want to trigger it by putting a negative 50,000 just to see what exactly happens so let's say i actually go for negative 75,000 and hit enter you can see what's going on here where because we had a negative cash available of 75,000 that means that the revolver needs to take on 75,000 because that's the amount we need to borrow to have a cash balance of zero. 
And then in the following years, because we have excess cash, it's going to use that cash available to pay down the revolver amount, as you can see over here. So that seems to be working well. Let's go back by pressing Ctrl Z. Now the revolver is also going to have an interest. So let's go ahead and calculate that down below. It's going to be equals to the revolver interest rate multiplied by the ending balance and we'll hit enter there. So the total interest expense is going to be the revolver's interest rate multiplied by the interest expense for the revolver plus the other interest that we have, which is the one with the interest expense for the long-term debt here. So we'll also add that and hit enter. Now we can go ahead and select these, shift right and control R. Let's go ahead and link these updated amounts into our income statement. So if we scroll back up here under the interest, it's not going to be uh, just this figure anymore, but instead it's going to be equals, negative, and all the way to the bottom, we'll find it right here. So it's that same 28,000 for now, but you'll notice that we get this error sign that basically says that we have some circularity error. This happens when a formula is trying to calculate itself. So for now, let's just hit on escape. Let's go ahead and make sure we link everything for now with control R. And you, you'll notice that we have this blue arrow, which is basically showing that we do have this circularity error. An example of when circularity might happen is if we do something like equals, and we try to sum the cell that we're currently trying to find the total of. So like J2 plus J3 plus J4, in this case, we would have a circularity error as we're trying to find the total in J2. So it's calculating itself. Now, if we need to use circularity, as is this current example, there are a few workarounds. And one of the easier ones probably is using the iterative calculation. So you can see right now that we're not actually getting the values, even though we're linking to the right area. So the 28,000 is showing as a zero. So we can head over to the file, towards the bottom under options. Here in the pop-up, we'll go over to formulas and just enable iterative calculations. Make this value very big and this one very small. And you can just hit on OK there. Now you'll see that we're getting the values back in. We don't have that arrow anymore. Our balance sheet is balancing. So let's go ahead and test it out down below using the revolver. And let's activate it by say putting another negative, negative figure here, like let's say minus 75,000 again, hitting enter. Now you can see that it's all working in that we have to take out the revolver. So that makes sense. We also have to pay interest on that revolver. So that's making sense there. Let's see if everything is still balancing though. If we go over to the balance sheet, it seems to be balancing. So that's all looking good. Now this model does have some simplifications. So if you want to learn more complex ones using real financial statements, such as Apple's, check out our complete finance and valuation course over here, or check out this video over here on a DCF, which is the next step after a free statement model. Hit that like and that subscribe, and I'll catch you in the next one.